Good day. Today, I'm going to be playing around with mixing 2D and 3D elements in Godot. My goal is to make it so that I can use a tile map, which is a 2D node, to generate 3D grid maps. The application that I'm using this for is for a three-dimensional dungeon game um, that is kind of like a grid map paper map maze. And uh, this will allow me to not only use the 2D branch of this as a level editor, but will also allow me to display a two-dimensional map in game. Um, other applications for some of the stuff we're talking about in here would include if you wanted to make some sort of a map heads up display or radar in a game. So if any of this sounds interesting, stick around. Welcome to Snippets, a segment where we look at code snippets and other things in the Godot engine and how I'm using them in projects, hopefully to inspire everybody else to come up with their own creative solutions. First thing we're gonna do is do a quick overview of how the project is set up. So we start out with a spatial node, which I've renamed na uh, main, after which we have a tile map node, a grid map node, a camera node, and an optional mesh instance, which is simply a plane that I set in the back to add a little bit of contrast at the back. So first thing we have to do is go through setting up the tile map. I'm not going to go through how to use a tile map completely because that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. But all you need to do is either create a single tile or a um, auto tile. Uh, the important thing is that when you look at your tile set, that the number at the back here if you hit the information button here is zero so regardless of whether or not you use an auto tile or a single tile that has to be set up and you could quite simply use the godot icon uh, resized to the size of your tile in the tile map in order to accomplish that if necessary for the grid map it's also a very similar setup so for those who haven't played in 3d before a uh, grid map is in a lot of ways an equivalent to a tile map in three dimensions um, in order to create a library a mesh library for a grid map you simply create a new scene add a spatial node attach a mesh instance And the way you would add tiles to a, or rather um, mesh instance to a grid library, if you want to have multiples, you would just create a variety of mesh instances in here, and then we're going to export it. So for this mesh instance, we're quite simply going to make it a uh, cube mesh, and we'll just leave it at the default settings. If you were having multiple different mesh instances that would be added to this library, you would just keep adding more to the edge and uh, potentially add collision shapes as necessary, but that goes beyond the scope of this project, so I digress. So once we have that set up how we want, we would go to uh, Scene, Convert to, Mesh Library, and then we would uh, save it as appropriate uh, to where we want to find it. As you can see, I have mine right here. And then uh, you can close the project or you could save it if you want to modify it later and then go back into the grid map and quite simply drag your mesh library into here. So the important thing is that the very first item in, in the library will automatically be labeled zero. So for this project, that's all we need is one object labeled zero. Other than that, uh, just make sure that the camera is placed in a place where you can uh, you can see everything. If you're uh, looking into the 3D scene, for those that haven't uh, haven't done any of this before, you want to make sure that this triangular cone is facing down towards your scene and uh, raise the camera up on the z-axis uh, to roughly where you want it. So now going into the code, the first thing we're going to mention about this project is that it is a tool script. Uh, tool scripts are interesting in that they can run all the stuff inside the functions uh, while in the editor, which makes them potentially very destructive. So you have to watch how you use them because they can actually modify your project in real time, um, which is going to be an asset to us today. So uh, the first things to mention about this script is first we're going to declare, declare two uh, variables, on-ready variables, to point to 
the tile map and to the grid map respectively. Uh, we're going to have a vector 2 that represents the size of our grid, which is 20 by 20. And we're going to create a dictionary, which is going to hold all of the um, tile areas that have a tile in them called walls. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Boolean export variable. This is going to be used to activate the tool functionality of our script. It's going to have a setter using the setGet uh, keyword. We put the name of our setter function in there. For those that haven't used set, setters uh, yet, setters or getters, generally uh, you don't necessarily have to follow the format of the name, but you must have a value in there. Uh, I called it value. And also, um, for the if statement, this engine dot is editor hint basically confirms that we are in the editor while we are using it. Otherwise, it will ignore this. So if we were in the game, it would ignore this if we were actually running it. Um, and it's going to check to see if the value that's being passed. So if we're changing it to true, it is going to call these two functions, which we're going to be going over in just a second. And then it will change the Boolean value of draw world to true. If you do not put a change of value somewhere in the setter, then the value will never change and will always stay false. Um, the else statement is obviously if the value is not true, it must be false, then it will run these two functions. The world.clear is a uh, clear function in the grid map node, um, which basically clears out all things that are on the grid map. And the walls.clear uses a clear function that is part of the dictionary method. Um, and what it will do is it will reset the value of this dictionary back to this. So, uh, and of course, we will reset the value to false because like I said before, if we don't change the value in here, it never changes. All right, so the whole purpose of all of this is that when we hit true and granted, like. Uh, depending on your use case for this, you might not be using the tool scripting. But the whole purpose is that when we hit true on the Boolean in the main value, what will happen in the code is that uh, once it becomes true, it will call the get walls from map. When we go into the get walls from map, it's going to iterate through the column and rows of the 20 by 20 grid we've given. It's going to look at the corresponding cell within the tile map. Uh, and if the value does not equal negative one, which would mean that there's no tile there, then it is going to assign a value to it. It's going to assign a value to the dictionary. That value is going to be a vector three, which is going to uh, provide the X, Y, and Z 3D coordinates. Now, when dealing with converting from 2D to 3D, depending on the perspective on the grid, things change a bit. In our particular case, the X of the vector 3 will be the equivalent of our X column on our tile map. The Y value is actually going to be the height in this particular case. So it is going to be set to 0 by default. And the Y is actually going to go to the Z value of the vector three that's going to be provided for the grid map. So X, Y, Z, the Z is going to correspond to the Y in 2D. Um, and this is going to make a dictionary value with a key that is that vector three, and it is going to equal the value that is in the 2D cell, which if it is a wall will be zero, and if not, will be negative one. But of course, negative one isn't allowed. So the only thing in there is going to be in the dictionary is going to be values that contain a wall. After we have gotten that information, we're going to generate 3D walls. We could iterate through going through the X, Y column, checking the dictionary to see if it has the key, which is equivalent to the square that we're in, which would be the X, Y, Z coordinates. And if the dictionary has that, it's going to set whatever is at those coordinates to equal the value of what's in that dictionary. So the value of that key, which will be zero if it is a wall. So 
the end result is that if we go into here and we click this variable, which is the Boolean variable that we have the setter set on, as you can see, when it goes to false, it clears the entire value of the grid map, which basically means that blank slate. When we hit draw world again, it will draw whatever is on the tile map. So if we were using this to test editor functionality, which is my primary use for this, if we were to modify the tile map and then go back into the main, if we clear it and bring it back, it will include the modifications that we made within the scene. A couple of points of note of this project is the way that it's currently constructed. If we were to run the actual project, we would notice that it will simultaneously display both the 3D elements and the 2D elements. So if we were using it in this condition, we would probably want to, to toggle the visibility on the tile map. Uh, if we were to intentionally do this, to run with the tile map displayed, we would probably want to project it to a viewport or into uh, as well into a UI node. But one thing to, to note is that if we are looking at the tile map, we put the visibility, we can picture messing with this by uh, altering the rotation. Um, ideally, we would want the rotation centered, but you get my point, so that you could have it set up as a map that orients itself uh, depending on where the player is facing. Another potential use case for this is if you were trying to convert a project from uh, 2D into 3D, you could definitely bring the levels in as tile maps, tile map aspects of your level, and use this to convert it into grid maps. Uh, by running it into the script, when we're done, depending on how we have our project set up, we could right click on the grid map and actually just save the branch as a scene and then save it as your actual level. Uh, with a bit more code, we could even take other aspects of your two-dimensional level and convert it into the three-dimensional level. So I hope that you found this interesting and good luck in your future projects. And if this helps you with any sort of project, please let me know. I'd greatly appreciate it if you support my channel by liking or subscribing. And don't forget to turn notifications on if you're interested in hearing about future stuff. Thank you.